Hey guys, it's Landon with RH. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a quick, <clears throat> pretty pretty simple QGIS project. This is going to be used for a couple purposes, but one of those is it's going to be taken by our field crews into the into the field using Mergen Maps, which is a super cool plugin. I encourage you to check that out. But I'm doing this, I'm going to record this video for one of my survey techs, Cosette. I sent her some of my other QGIS videos. I didn't realize how old they were. Some of them are five or six or seven years old. And so she's like, some of these videos aren't very good. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So anyways, <laughs> I'm going to do a new one for Cosette and then she can watch it. I'm going to make her practice this. But So in this particular job what we're doing is we've got to go out and inspect some utility poles overhead utility poles and take some pictures and do a few other things and so the data i got from the utility company has the pole locations they're just latitude longitudes they're just approximate locations with latitude longitudes and uh sometimes and especially in rural areas it can be hard to identify the exact pole that the utility company is talking about because of course there's a pole every 150 or 200 feet so it can be hard to tell in, in rural areas. And this is a this is a rural area southeast of Stockton, California. So we're gonna set this GIS up. It's gonna make things a lot easier for the field crew and it will allow me to track the work a little bit. And we're just trying to get our survey survey techs at RH here <clears throat> accustomed to setting up these little GIS projects. So oh man, there's a so my favorite word whisker. I downloaded some background aerial imagery, which I usually get from USGS Earth Explorer. And in this area, because it's rural, the only thing they have available is the is the one meter USDA NAEP imagery, which is fine for what we're doing. And I already reprojected that. When you download it, it comes in UTM, and I, I reprojected it to state California State Plain Zone Three because that's what we work in here most of the time. <clears throat> that's the map projection we work in here most of the time because we're in Central California. So, oh, there's another one. Man, that is my favorite. If I only had a dollar for every time I said so. I've already reprojected those images. I will try and remember in YouTube, in the comments for this video, to link to the video. I do a specific video that shows you how to download imagery in USGS Earth Explorer and reproject it in QGIS. So I've already done that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import that background imagery and then just give it a little bit of a fade, I hope. Actually, that's not the first thing to do. We're going to do the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go under the project menu and we're going to set up our coordinate system and zone. Then we're going to save our project. So I have it here in my list of recent systems. If it's not here, you got to look it up. But we're in California Zone 3 because I use that all the time. It's in my recently used list. I'll say apply. Now, when you do that, it's going to just give you this warning here. It's saying, hey, we did a ballpark transformation. That's fine. Just close that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this. So let me think about where I want to save this. I think for now, I'm just going to put this on my desktop and put it in temp. And we usually call these MPF for master project file. Save that. All right, now we're going to add our raster imagery. Sorry, layer, add layer, add raster layer. And I'm going to just browse for that real quick. So I've got these two TIFF files that we're going to import. So I've just path to those, and I'll say add and they will load all right that looks better okay so that's state plane sorry i grabbed the wrong map projection there also key to having a successful gis project is choosing the right map projection okay so we're going to get our other data in here we're, we only have one other layer that we're going to put in here and it's it's the parcel layer the county parcel layer so let's go ahead and get that we're, and we're, it's a ton of data we're going to get it in here and then we're going to end up cutting some cutting out a, a chunk we just want the data for our area so I'll show you how to do that. So first we're going to just add the whole county parcel layer. So 
So at my shop, this is on the data drive Cosette under GIS data vector. San Joaquin County. Oh, that's roads. I don't want roads. I want parcels. We might not have the parcels downloaded. I'm just I'm just striking out here, aren't I? Let me pause the video and go download the parcels. All right, here's our parcel data. It's just a shape file from the county. So we're going to go ahead and add that. It's already in state plane. It drops right in. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull that up above my images. <clears throat> now what we want to do is we just want to select the parcels that we need. So to make that a little bit easier, I'm going to go into the properties of my layer and I'm just going to put a transparency on this uh, fill here so I can see the images underneath. So now I know what images to select. So now I'm going to go ahead and select those images. Sorry, those parcels over the images. And then what we want to do is we want to save those as a new layer. And I'm trying to remember how to do that. sure if this is going to do what I want. We're about to find out. Oh, we're going to just put this for now on that same temp folder. Yeah, I'm going to call it polygons, parcels, I'm going to call it land parcels. I'm just saving it as a GeoJawson file. Yeah, I have the feeling it's writing out the whole file. All right, guys. I, I was actually, I dorked that up just a little bit. So after you've made your selection in your parcel layer, you right-click on your layer, and you're going to come down here to Export, but you don't want Save Features As. You want Save Selected Features As. So let's try that. So now we should have a new layer that just has the, the, the parcels over our project area. So I'm going to remove the countywide parcel layer. <clears throat> and you can see now we've got our two data sets. So we've got the raster layers, the rasters, and then we've got the parcels. And I like to put all my rasters in a common, what they call a group. So we can just make a group here called USDA NAEP. And then we can take these, and we can just drop them in there, and that allows you to turn them on and off as a, as a unit there, like they were, like they're on a common layer. Okay, so what I want to uh, there's a so what I want to do now is just do a little bit of styling in here. So we're gonna open up the properties on our parcel layer, and we're gonna just do a couple things. Now we have. We have a parcel style, so Cosette, we have a parcel style that you can import, but just for the purposes of training, I'm just going to show you guys how you can set this up. So I'm going to set this to a little bit of a gray, and then I'm going to set the transparency down. We'll go about 60%. And then we're going to go to Labels, and we're going to just label the APN attribute. So that's already the default there. And we're going to go with Dosis because that's our standard company font here. And I'm going to say 12 points high. And then I like to do a little buffer on there. So we'll do a three pixel buffer. We'll say apply. And give it a minute there to redraw. So now you guys can see we're getting the APNs, which is helpful, and we've got that kind of transparent fill on our parcels. I'm going to do one other thing here, and I'm just going to make the lines a little thicker. So let's do that. So the stroke, 
I'm gonna make three pixels and then I'm gonna round my ends. All right, so that looks a lot better. So just we just about got this ready to go now. Uh, you could throw some road names. Uh, you could get to the county road layers and throw some road names in here. I don't. I don't think I need to do that. Um, maybe we will. Maybe we'll throw and then I'll do another video. We'll throw in the road names, and we'll um, actually take the latitude longitude coordinates for each of the overhead poles and we'll import those from a delimited text file and make them a point layer here and then we'll bundle everything up and get it into Mergen maps and that's basically that's basically going to be it then we'll be ready to go so we'll we'll give that a try guys we'll do one more video shows you how to get this set up